In this ninth video of developing web applications with ASP.NET Web Forms 4.5, we're going to be looking at unobtrusive JavaScript validation. Validation controls have been around in ASP.NET Web Forms 2.0 and have allowed data-driven applications to ensure that the data entered by the end user met certain constraints. So we have had validation controls like the required field validator or the uh, range validator control. In today's video, I want to show several improvements to the ASP.NET validation controls and how they too can be driven by the metadata attributes that we place on the model classes built with Entity Framework Code First. Thus, uh, using Entity Framework Code First and dynamic data, validation will be generated by the UX framework directly with little uh, or no effort from the programming standpoint. So to get started, let's just run back into the development environment and bring up the solution from where we left it off last time. And last time, as you remember, we added all of the entity framework um, dynamic field and dynamic control um, to use the dynamic field templates from that are coming with dynamic data and that were uh, driven by the attributes that we sprinkled on our model. So what we want to do today is I actually want to go into the, uh, for example, the products or the category cla uh, details class, but let's start with the category details of the products details class. So if I go into the product de details class and I go into the uh, method to actually edit a product, we see here that um, we have a try update model and the try update model is going to actually try and update the mo the uh, object that we already have with the uh, with the data that uh, came back from the control. And before doing that, what we do is we try and find a product with the uh, ID that was po populated by the form view control using the uh, data key names uh, property. So should no product exist, we'd want to indicate an error. Um, so it, to do that, let's just grab some code. And to indicate that an error occurred, what we want to do is we want to use the model state class. So let's replace this code. And let's say uh, model state dot add error. Um, and then we'll just uh, format a string saying that we could not find a product with this particular product ID. And then obviously we will return zero. All right. And what this does is it adds an entry to, uh, to my model state object, which is exposed by the page with a key called not found error and with a value of a product with ID uh, populated from the product ID could not be found. This is a case when the pro when we are updating a product that has been deleted uh, by another user before we finished updating it. We can have the same thing for the category ID. So if we go into the category, let's just grab the same piece of code and go into the category details page. And in the category details page, um, in the update toy category, the first thing we try and do is we try and find a category ID object with the matching uh, category ID, which is populated in again by the form view using the data key names property. And if there should be no category, this means that somebody actually deleted the category before I finished editing. So I should actually be returning uh, an error here. So what I want to do is I want to return a uh, error again with a key of model of not found error, and then format it with uh, some string and then add return zero. So this is all I need to do in order to uh, display uh, specific errors coming from uh, the processing when I'm doing updating or inserting. And now let's see how that how we can do what we can do to actually get these errors to show up in the user interface. So the first thing we can do is we can actually add uh, validation controls. So um, for the category, we're going to add a validation summary control, which is actually going to uh, 
keep all of the validation uh, error messages that we may f see when trying to insert a new category. So this is a validation summary control. Um, it has a validation group, so it's only going to be showing uh, messages that come from controls within the same validation group. And you see that the dynamic controls that I've set in um, in this particular uh, form view in the insert item template have the validation insert group set to insert just like the uh, validation summary. So the validation summary is only going to be displaying uh, errors from the uh, insert uh, validation group. So there we go, we've added a validation summary. Let's add a second validation summary for the uh, edit item template. And for the edit item template, the logic is exactly the same. So the validation summary control is just going to look for all errors coming from controls within its own validation group. And the validation group is edit this time. And you notice that the dynamic controls that we have in the edit item template are also um, having the validation group set to edit. And we're going to do the same thing in the product uh, one. So in the product one, what we're going to do is we're going to add the validation summary for the insert item template. So product details. And in the product details, let's just go into the insert item template. Should be higher up. There we go, the insert item template. And then just add that in. And add that. Let's format this so that it, it looks nice. And let's go ahead and add the uh, validation summary for the edit item template as well. So there we go. Now, if I run this, you'll see that the uh, the validation controls will actually uh, be rendered via dynamic data um, to actually look at the attributes which are on my model and make sure that the constraints which I've placed on my model are met uh, when I'm displaying my data or I'm trying to modify it. So let's create a new product. And if I create a new product and I just click on create product, what you see is that um, I have a whole bunch of errors that are already coming up and that they're displayed in my validation summary. The name field is required, the product description field is required, the listings price is required, and so on. Um, I can put a price of minus one. And if I put a price of minus one, what you'll see is that the listings price must be between zero and 500. And remember that zero between zero and 500 is actually coming directly out of my product class where I am saying that the unit price uh, here is between 0 and 500. So you see that with absolutely little effort I was actually able to get validation on all of these directly uh, coming from the way in which I sprinkled attributes on my model classes. And the way this works is that actually all of the uh, entity framework uh, field templates, so if I go, for example, into the, um, into the text edit, you see that I have uh, a bunch of validators that are added. I have a required field validator, a regular expression validator, and a dynamic validator, which are all added in there, plus uh, a whole bunch of code uh, that sets up the validation for all of these controls based on the, the attributes that have been uh, sprinkled on my uh, entity framework cla uh, model classes. And this is the kind of code that uh, you'd want data dynamic data to write for you and never have to worry about and just do tweaking in here if you needed to. And this is the kind of code that will ensure that my validators get placed wherever I am actually actually editing um, values of type string. So I'm using the text edit field template. 
and I get validation for free. Now, the other thing that happened with um, with validation controls was that usually when we were validating uh, using validation controls, we used to have these very long array of ja JavaScript arrays on the bottom of the page, um, each array corresponding to a particular validator control. So the more validation controls we had on the page, the more JavaScript arrays you would get. So let's just go in here and say add category. And if I look at the code, the source code for the page, you see that nowhere in the page do I have anything that looks like a JavaScript array, especially not on the bottom. The bottom is just clear text. Now, if I go and I look at using the developer tools at this, uh, at the at this page, and I go into the scripts tag, into the scripts uh, tab, and I look at the page, you see that I'm actually loading uh, jQuery uh, directly uh, into my page, and basically what the validation controls are doing is that they're using jQuery uh, to validate the user input, and it's not jQuery valid because jQuery validate works in a totally different form uh, or in a way that was unadaptable to web forms but we are using jQuery so if again we look under the covers and we look at the source code of the page what we see is that for each of my controls so here is my text area called text box one and um, it is displaying the category name and you have three spans in here because this field template actually injects three validator controls um, which correspond to the validation control markup that got rendered and this validation control markup is using data dash attributes um, which will be recovered using uh, jQuery to actually uh, position all of the uh, validation logic on my control so for example I have a uh, data um, a data dash val validation group which is insert and then I have if I look that if I look here I have the control uh, the title of the control I also have the function I should have somewhere around here there we go control to validate the name of the control that I want to validate and all of this is uh, magically wired up by dynamic data so that I don't have I don't have to worry about it. Now the last thing I want to do to uh, complete my sample is I want to go back into the category and products details pages and I want to add one more control. So let's start with the category details page and I want to add another control underneath the form view. Um, so let's just get that control and this is a control of type model error message. And this is a new validation control that was added in Framework 4.5 um, to display model state validate uh, model state errors. So let's just add this control in here. And basically, what this control is doing is that it is only going to be displaying uh, errors that are coming from uh, the model state and that have a key of not found error. So the key uh, not found error is the is defined when I am actually trying to do an update and I do not find the category anymore I am adding a not found error and this not found error will will actually be displayed in the markup by the uh, model error message uh, validator validator control now I'm going to do the same thing for the products just grab the model error message validator for the products details page and drop it into the page so let's just drop it underneath the form view and format this a bit so again, this control is just going to be looking at the model state and if it finds errors within the model state with the model state key of not found, it's going to be displaying the error message that's corresponding to that particular model state. So let's go ahead and run the sample again. So this time I'm going to log in. OK, 
Okay, and let's go to the products listings. And let's bring up a second tab and go to the products listings as, as well. So now I'm going to go to the products listing and I'm just going to take this product here and I'm going to take it in both tabs and in one of the tabs I'm going to say edit product. So I'm going to start editing my uh, product here. So I can add more description. And while I am editing my product, let's uh, change its price to 45. And while I'm editing my product, suppose that the second user is working on the application and hits the delete product button. So if I hit the delete product button, the product is deleted, yet the other user is still in, uh, in the process of modifying the product. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a breakpoint on the um, product details page when I am trying to update the product and we'll go through the execution of the code uh, one step at a time. So here we go. I'm just going to click on the update product and I'm hitting the breakpoint and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find a product which corresponds to the given product ID. Unfortunately the product is null so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a model state error um, into my model state object which is exposed by the class and then I'm just going to be returning so return zero and what this is going to do if I continue all the way is that it's going to say that a product with ID 3 could not be found on the page. Obviously this is also going to be displayed by the uh, uh, validation summary control but in the validation summary control if I was to actually also add minus 45 you'd see that I'd also get uh, more errors um, in uh, the validation summary saying that uh, the field units must be between 0 and 100 which is what was defined in the model where I whereas I set them to minus 45 and you see now that this is actually client-side validation whereas the uh, the uh, model state error is a server-side validation and require the post back so this is how you do uh, unobtrusive JavaScript validation um, in ASP.NET Web Forms 4.5. There is just one thing I would like to show you is that if you're upgrading from an existing 4.0 project, the unobtrusive validation is not on by default. So what you need to do is you need to go into the web.config and you will need to add in the app settings section a key with uh, value uh, a key called validation settings an obtrusive validation mode and set this to web forms and once you do this an obtrusive unobtrusive javascript validation is going to uh, automatically be on for all of your project